Now we will make the brands table. We will use the PHP artisan make migration command and we will name it create brands table. In the migration, there will already be the ID and timestamps, and we will add the name and of type string. Then after that, we will make our model using the PHP artisan make model brands. And then we will make the brands controller using PHP artisan make controller. In the brand model, we will write the feeable that is the name of the columns in the database that we will add or update. And we only have the name, so protected feeable name. And now, let's use the protected hidden for the created at and updated at columns. As the users don't need to see the created at and updated at columns, so we will put them in the hidden. Now let's move to the controller. In our brands controller, the first function is the index function. We will use it to retrieve all the brands that we have in our database. So first we will call the brands model, and then we will use the all method to retrieve all the brands. But what if the frontend wants to use pagination? Then we will use the paginate method instead of the all method, and we will set it to 10. And then, we will return a response.json with all the brands that we just retrieved. For our next function, we will use the show, public function show, and we will pass it the ID that we will use. In the show function, we will retrieve the brand that we had. In the show function, we will retrieve the brand with the ID that we just passed using the find method, as we will define a brand variable, and we will use the brands model, and then use the find method, and we pass it the ID that we just passed in the function. Now if there is a brand, we will return response.json with the brand that we just retrieved. But if we didn't find the brand, we will return just a message with brand not found. Now for our next function. We will use the function store, and we will pass it the request object. The request object is used to get the data that the frontend just passed to us. So first, we will validate the data. We will see if the request contained a name. We will make it required. And we want it to be unique, as we don't get duplicate brands in our database. Then, we will create a new brand object from the brand model, and we will add the name to it and save it. That is how we can store the new brand to our database. Then we will return a response.json with the message that the brand is added. We will use a try catch and catch any exceptions that we got and we will return response.json with the exception that we received, if there is any errors. For our next function, it will be the update brand function. We will pass it the ID of the brand and the request object. We will validate the request object that it contains the name, and we will make it required. Then, we will find the brand that we have the ID, 
and we will update it with the name that we got from the request. We will return a response JSON that the brand is updated. If there are any exceptions, we will return response JSON with the exception that we got. For our next function, it will be the delete brand function. We will pass it the ID of the brand that we want to delete, and then we will find that brand and delete it. And then we will return a response JSON if the brand is not found. But if it was found, we will return a response JSON that the brand is deleted. Now, let's go to our roots to define the roots that we just made. To define the functions that we just created. In our API.php, first we will define the index function using the root get. We will pass it the index, and we will use the brands controller class, and then the name of the function, and the same things for the show, store, update, brand, and delete brand. But the show, update, and delete, we will pass it another query parameter and that will be the ID of the brand. And the methods of the store will be post, as we are storing data, and we are getting data. The delete will be delete. The update brand will be put. But there is a shorter and cleaner way to write our roots. We can use the root controller as we will pass it the controller that we use, that is the branch controller, and then we will use the group as, we will group those roots that we just defined, and we will remove the controllers from it. And now let's make our categories table, First we will make migrations using a PHP artisan make migrations command and then our controller and our model. In our categories migrations we will add name and image as strings. And in our categories model it will be similar to the brand's model so we'll copy it and add the image to the feeables. As for our controllers the category controller is similar to the brand one so we will copy it and edit the category controller. We will call the categories model instead of the brand's model and adjust every name to the categories. We will add the image in the validation in the store function and we will add the image in the validation of the update category function. After all our adjustments we will need to use this block of code for the file upload for the image in this code, the it's first checking if there is a file in the assets uploads category. And then the category image it's checking if there is a already a file in there, if it exists it will delete the file, 
and if it doesn't exist or after it's deleted it will get the original extension from the file that we uploaded and then it will add the file name and move the file into the assets upload categories, and we'll name it the file name and then we will save the file name in the categories table at the image column. That is how we will upload an image the assets upload category path will be created in the public folder after we upload our first. And we need to edit the update category code also for the image upload and it will be the same as the store function but we will have to edit the code a little bit, as we first will find the category and then we will check if there is an image we will delete it and upload the new image that we just updated. And then let's go to our roots API with PHP to register the functions that we just created in the roots file. So we will use the same method as the brands, we will update the controller to category controller and update the functions names and endpoints to update category, delete category. And that's it for our video for today, we'll see you in the next one.